Hey kids, we are starting another video and it's lesson five in module six. And the objective here is to investigate patterns in vertical and horizontal lines and interpret points on the plane as distances from the axes. And so then they've got that little plural axes for both the X and the Y axes. And this will always be X and this will always be Y. And um, today I'm using my broken ruler from He Who Shall Not Be Named, <laughs> but it's actually a little shorter, so <laughs> it might work well for my video purposes. Not that I want everybody breaking the rulers, but anyway, um, and also my iPad is updating, and if it cuts me off in the middle of this, I'm going to be slightly annoyed, slightly annoyed, but I will continue with a second video. So let's jump in, and maybe I can finish before it cuts me off. Okay, we're going to use the coordinate plane to the right to answer the following questions. Use a straight edge to construct a line that goes through points A and B, then label the line E. When I create a line, I usually will just send it. That means I'm just going to have it go farther than uh, the, the two points. And remember to put arrows on the ends. That's what a line is, and we have to label it E. Did it. Line E is parallel to which axis? Remember that a pair of L's go the same direction, so this is parallel to X, and is perpendicular to the what? The Y axis. Okay, perpendicular means crosses at exactly a 90 degree angle. Plot two more points on line E and name them C and D. You can put lines or points anywhere on this line. So just pick a couple points. I'll put mine in between. And I'll skip a couple spaces. And so we have to label them C and D. C and D. So um, check. Give the coordinates of each point below. So you're going to look at your number line and see what they're counting by. Blank, 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 five. Blank, 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 ten. Counting by ones. Mark it. Okay, you can continue, but look up this one. This one's going to be the same. And just label it so that any other points you make, you can easily identify the coordinate pairs. Okay, give the coordinates for each point below. A is going to be, you always go right, then up. So 3 and 4. 3 comma 4. Put parentheses. B is going to be way out here at 11, which we hadn't numbered yet. So 11 and 4. Notice, Y is 4 because this is a straight line on these two points on the 4 that crosses the Y. Um, C, yours can be any of these. So it can have any X value, but guess what the Y is going to be? 4. Mine's going to be 5, 4. Yours can be anything, 4. And again, for D, mine is 7, 4. But yours, you need to check it carefully. And did you put your point D on 7, or maybe 8, or maybe 9? What do all the points on line E have in common? Hmm. What is it that they have in common? Well, they all have y equals 4. OK, so that's because this line is parallel to x, and so it's always going to have y values of 4. Give the coordinates of another point that would fall on line E with an X coordinate greater than 15. So what they're saying is if you were to use something beyond this grid, like show that you understand about lines that are parallel to X, and so we know that they all are going to have a Y value of 4, so now you have to have X greater than 15, so let's say 20 or 30 or 80 or a thousand but usually you just keep it you know reasonable under 50 and guess what y is going to be 4 so you can have any over 15 okay any number over 15 but this must be 4 okay 
so that's how you do those there. Then let's go to the back side. Yay, I won't have to do as much flipping back and forth today as on the previous video. Plot the following points on the coordinate plane to the right. And so we're going to put P, Q, R, and S. Let's look at what we're counting by. And we have line and then half line one. So we're counting by fourths, but you don't have to um, label everything. Just please know that each of these lines represents a count of one fourth. So now that you've got that all laid out, we can have one and a half, one half. So one and a half, and then half. Put your point, label it P. Remember, lower right is usually a good safe place to plot the point. One and a half and two and a half. So we're going to go all the way up to here. And this is point Q. Done. And one and a half, one and a fourth. Hmm, noticing a pattern. One and a half. Here's one. Here's one fourth. One more line past that. And that's R and then S, one and a half and three fourths. So you have a little cluster grouping, made them, use a straight edge to draw a line to connect these points, label the line H. label the line H. H. They usually do lines in like crazy cursive. You can try your cursive there too. Did it. In line H, X equals what? For all the values of Y. What is X? Well, you can look here and you can see that X is one and a half for every single one of them. Or you can look here and see that X will always be one and a half. So we're confirming all of our work there. Now circle the correct word. Remember that parallel means they go the same direction and perpendicular means it's crossing it at a 90 degree angle. So line H, this is the line, is what? You have to pick one or this one or this one, 2X. Line H is what? 2X, okay? So it's perpendicular because it's crossing it and creating this 90 degree angle here. So that's how you know it's perpendicular. So if it's perpendicular to x, then to the y axis, it's gonna be parallel. Here's the y, here's our line. Pair of L's, parallel, okay? What pattern occurs in the coordinate pairs that let you know that line H is vertical? So when you look at the values, they're all gonna have the same uh, x, the same y value, okay, so vertical, sorry, the same x value, the same x value, you have to have your one and a half for x, and that's what we have when we created our line here, okay, see what I mean by this gets, yeah, I have to be really careful, so what pattern, uh, to let you know that h is vertical, the x values, are all the same one and one half okay so we never we never vary from our X value okay but the Y it goes up it can be anything anything for Y but X always has to be this that's how you know it's vertical okay X values are the same you can have a parallel line over here on two and all your X values can be Two, and then you could have a y value of one, and then it could be two, three, two, two and a half, two, four, two, fifty. Okay, so that would be always the same for x. Okay, next. For each pair of points below, think about the line that joins them. For which pairs is the line parallel to the x axis? Now, what we just did up here, when we had parallel to y, okay, and we had all the same x numbers. Think about a line that's parallel to X, okay? Now, then circle your answer, and without plotting them, explain how you know. So, think about this one, and then we have to kind of do the opposite. So, if I have 
this, it would create one point. Okay? And this would create one point. Now, what do they have in common? Well, 1.4, 2.2, and 4.1, 2.4. They don't have anything in common. So it seems like this would not be a good pair. Move on. This one has 3 for x and 9 for y. This one has 8 for x and 9 for y. Notice at least we have the same y value. So that is kind of the same thing we did here, but it's the opposite because these had to be the same for x, but we're looking for a y value that's the same. So this would be a good uh, making a parallel to the x-axis um, horizontal line. Now for this, we have one and a fourth for x and one and a fourth for x. Now those are where the x values are the same. And that's going to make a vertical line, but we don't want that. So that's not going to help us. So right here, you're going to say the y values are the same or must be the same. And so these are. And that's how you know you're going to get a line that's parallel to x, okay? Because they will all cross y at 9. All right, next one for 4. For each pair of points below, think about the line that joins them, again, in the same way that we did up here. For which pairs is the line parallel to the y-axis? Parallel to y, just like this one, okay? And what did we do up here, and so how do we know? Um, circle your answers, then give two other coordinates that would fall on this line. So you know it has to be the same value. Look for x to be the same. Okay, and so if I see 4 and 6, those are not the same, and I see 3 fifths and 1 fifth, and those are not the same, but I see here 8 tenths and 8 tenths, and those are the same. Okay, and so these would create a line that crosses 8 tenths, and remember your number line can count by anything, so we can use decimals, and so this would create a uh, number line that would be parallel to y, and that's what we have here. And two other points that would be on that line, well, we have to have 0 0.8 for both, and then you can decide what you want for your y. It can be anything, okay, literally anything. But make it a decimal, because we are counting by decimals, and it seems that we could count uh, all the way up to the tenths, so I would not have a hundredths decimal. You could have like 1.2, or you could have 2.8, but don't have like 2.12, because that would not be on the number line properly, okay? And it can be anything, and they don't give us a limiter as to low or high, so you could have like 5.2, but you could also have like a 3.1. So those are just two examples. Again, you can have anything. Next and last section here. Write the coordinate pairs of three points that can be connected connected, to construct a line that is five and a half, okay, be careful here, five and a half units to the right of and parallel to the y-axis. Okay, that's going to be like this, but it has to be five and a half units to the right. So if y is here, okay, then you've got to be to the right and it's got to be parallel. So now you have to make up some coordinate pairs, like the two numbers. And we know that it has to be five and a half for x. So put a five and a half and a five and a half and a five and a half. You have to have that for your x value. Now for your y, you can put anything there. Okay, any number 
any number. This one we're using fractions, so don't use decimals. That's the only thing. And it just don't go below zero. So it could be, uh, you seem to be able to count with halves, but I wouldn't do fourths or three-fourths or anything like that. Keep it whole numbers or half numbers. So you could say six, or you could say 12 and a half, and you could, you know, 24, 87, whatever you want. Number six, write the coordinate pairs of three points that lie on the x-axis, okay? Now, if it's on the x-axis, that means it's not going up or down. So that means the y value is a zero. You don't go up, okay, for y. That means it's a zero. Now, what about your x values? Okay, well, if you want to, let me make it over here. If this is y and this is x, and it has to be on this axis. Okay, if I put one here and one here and one here, then what I'm doing is I'm not going up. I am going out to the right, so I do have to have a value. And you can count by anything. It doesn't give you any fractional or decimal amounts. So you can have like one fourth if you want. If you want to do fractional values, you can do 16 and a half, and that's fine. And then you can just have a whole number like eight, and that's fine too. Okay, but all your y values have to be zero because that's how you get it to be on the x axis. Finally, for the last one, Adam and Janice are playing Battleship. Oh, and by the way, I have to mention, Lesson 4 is super fun, and you should definitely play Battleship on, like with this thing. Um, you should make your number line uh, a fractional number. So Lesson 4 is a total winner. We always play it in class when everybody's here, when there's no COVID. And, um, and it's super, super fun. So I don't have a lesson for it because I can't play it by myself because I already would know all the answers. So anyway, you guys play Battleship for sure. It's a great way to practice um, your coordinate grid. So presented in the table is a record of Adam's guesses so far. So when you get a hit, you want to be like, yay, I'm going to call all the numbers right around that point. Okay, he has hit Janice's battleship using these coordinate pairs. So at first he said, okay, 311. So he went this way on X. Remember that this is X and this is Y. So if he says 311, it's going to be this way for 3 and then this way for 11. And he hit her battleship. And then he called 2 and 11. So he's on this same Y uh, line at 11, but it was a miss. So then it's like, okay, well, now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on my threes for the X because that was where her ship was. Now I know that it's on that three. Now he went to the four and he got another miss and then he went to three nine and he got a miss. So based on that, what would be the next thing you call? What should he guess next, and how do you know? So if you look at what is a yes, we got the 310 and 311. 39 is a no, so you want to go to 312 because the 9 is too low for Y. 10 is a yes, 11 is a yes, and if we haven't sunk the ship yet, then you have to go up for Y. So the, the 10 and 11 are yes, hit, but 9, why? 9 is a no, so go up to hit the battleship. Okay? So anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. I'm super glad I didn't get cut off. Yay, yay, yay. Uh, click subscribe and come back again. We'll see you on the next one.